No, you're right. You're you right. know what I mean? Like, right. come on, man. Yeah, you know? imagine that when you're white. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's even harder. You know, like, imagine, you know, imagine being, a, you, I, imagine you, being a shop owner, like, yeah, go to the white dude. You, you be like, what? Why is happening what did I with do? you? What did it's I do to with you? you? You know that guy you cut? They think they did something to you. You know that guy you cut that you always do to Beijing, and he comes and he pays you, what, like, like for the whole month ahead of time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a walker. Yeah, he was. He was a walker. Yeah, I'll give you that. First thing Mother he said to me was, yo, is he nice? I go, yeah. True what story. Was it? What, what did I tell him? I said, yo, if you don't like the haircut, I'm paying for That's it. That's a fact. He was a walking. Now one, he pays you a month ahead of time. That was one of the first walkings I ever cut here, too. Rob. Right. Yeah. 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 And now he brings his wife, too. And yep. all that. He got a membership. That's a fact. <laughs> Bro, once a month, he yeah. pays him ahead of time. That's right? it. And, and it sounds like it's that. It's a deal, man. Wow, that's crazy. Deal, that's man. just what it is, but... What's up, guys? It's Not Your Ordinary Barber with NYO Barbershop. What's up, CT Barber? <laughs> shopping back, at Shopping Back Slayer, a.k.a. your favorite barber's favorite barber, a.k.a. for the right price, I can make your shit tighter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so episode two, second, second, second episode of our uh, podcast here at NYO Barbershop. I got Spaz here, CT Barber. Um... Basically, we're just gonna go through. We'll start introducing little by little the guys we work with before we bring any guests or anybody on the show as well. Uh, but I got Spaz here today. Last episode you heard from from CT. Now we're gonna hear from Spaz. Um, talk about yourself, man. Let, let us know how old you are. So Testimony. So <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Jason. Yeah, I guess I could. I could, I could hey, Jason, aka Spaz, at Shopping Back Slayer. Uh, barber, um, originally from Wilkes-Barre, uh, 43 years old, um, been licensed for about 16, 17 years. I've been cutting hair too long. Hmm. I haven't cut hair a long time. But uh, yeah, and uh, I've, I've had the privilege to work with these two individuals at shops prior to this, and uh, the way the dominoes fell, things worked out, and now we're here together making magic. Yeah. You know what's weird, though, right? We all, one way or another, me and Spaz have worked together at one point. Um, you and Spaz have worked together at one point. Yeah, we did, yeah. Me and you worked together at one point that had nothing to do with the barbershop. <laughs> oh. You know, so it was like kind of like, Fags. Fags. you know, like one way or another, it was like, yeah, we Connect. So we all connected. At the, you know what I mean? Which is crazy. But, um, but yeah. Uh, so how long you been cutting here, you said? I've been licensed since... Um, no, I'm lying. I said I was licensed since 06. No, I have been licensed since 06. Okay. That, that's that's true. Yeah, uh, I've been I've been licensed since 06. Like everybody knows, um, I got my my barber license when I, when I was upstate in prison. You know what I mean? Um, I have my manager's license now. Um, you know, so it has progressed a little bit. But uh, yeah, I've been cutting hair for a whole long time, man. It's just, when you say out. you got your license in prison or when you came out of no, prison? No, I got my license in prison when, when, you know. How does that work? Because when you go, when you go to state prison for over five years, um, part of your parole stipulation, part of your, what is it? He'd be all right. All right. Uh, part of your parole stipulations is that you attain a, um, a trait. Mm -hmm. Be it plumbing, electrician, welding, interior, whatever. So um, before I went to prison, one of my homies, he uh, he had went and did a couple of years upstate. And he got his license, his barber license when he was prison, came home, and he was very successful. So, I mean, that was kind of like the catalyst to me to make the decision, you know, I'm going to I'm, I'm turn this negative into a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know? and, and truth be told, ever since that, I've never – wanted for a job I, you know what i mean yeah. i've been empl employed ever since like it was the, probably out of the worst thing that could have happened to me it was the the best outcome the best thing sense. you did yeah. yeah yeah in a sense you know and i think that's part of the reason why you know they 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 do that in in the prison system anyway but you know they, to try to give people a trade so when they get out it makes them a little bit easier i know it's hard as hard as hell for them to, you know, for a lot of people to even find work in the first place. But at least, you know, they have a trade and this is something that they can 
at least make a little bit more helpful for them to find a job when they get out. Well, absolutely. And one thing is like there's certain there's certain institutions that are um, they're rehabilitation oriented, yeah, yeah. and then there's other institutions that are warehouse oriented. If yeah, that makes any sense. I get it. Like they ain't never, you know. We there's some that want to help you. They want to help you succeed, but you also feel like there's some that that kind of use you for for you know their 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 whatever. Like you said, warehouse. Oh well, no, I'm talking about warehousing people because there's certain oh. people that are just never going home, so they don't need to. <laughs> I'm not I'm not laughing at that. Oh, first off, I want to say one thing. My condolences to Gilead Kid and his family for going through what he's going through. No parent should ever have to go through that. I just want to say that and. No, what's that about? Who's 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 Gilly? <laughs> but what happened though? Like, talk about his it. His son unfortunately was tragically taken from him this weekend outside of a bar. Man, three people, three individuals were shot. Whoa, oh, damn! And uh, you know we're in PA, we're in Northeast PA, but you know Philly. I spent a lot of time in Philly. You know a lot of good dudes from Philly. Was locked up with a lot of du- good dudes from Philly, so. I mean, just my condolences. I mean, I and got wallow. kids, man. That, I, I don't even know. Nephew. I don't even know how. I, I don't even want to think about it, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> Tough crazy. situation. That's crazy. Man. All right, so, Spaz. So this yes. got a little interesting before we get out of rhythm here. Yeah, yeah, sir. Um, yeah, sir. so I want you to you explain. Want me to talk about something? Just bring it up. Like, don't be shy. <laughs> nah, nah, yeah, yeah. I got um, so I got, I got real shit for days. <laughs> Y'all know that. I want you to explain the transition from you getting out of prison and like getting used to like new haircuts and stuff like that, like the new styles that okay. when you came out of prison like till now, like what's okay. the difference with you? Yeah, see, I take for granted. Y'all already know the guy that taught me and everything. I, I just um, I was taught by an old head Italian dude um, from South Philly. Dude was getting money. He was charging fifty dollars for haircuts in like the seventies, eighties. You know what I mean? But um, he was more oriented to one style. It wasn't, I feel as though it wasn't time appropriate for yeah. what we're in there. And, and, and here's the thing, though. His, his only concern was making sure you pass that test. That's it. He never sent one person from the prison to take the test. He was also a proctor, been involved in the whole barbering, the board, well, the PA barber board mm-hmm. for years. Proctor, you know, like I said. And his main goal was to make sure you pass that test. He would tell you that. Listen, I'm, I'm going to teach you so that you pass your test. You teach know? you how to pass the test. Yeah. Right, that's it. So, like, you know, when I was locked up, when, you know, when I worked in the barbershop, now, mind you, man, like the first couple weeks, yeah, you're doing bald heads or whatever. But right after that, two weeks in, you're doing one blade. You, you know, you're it's on-the-job training. <laughs> like, it's, it's not, you know, it's like here, this is what, you know, it was on-the-job training. So, um, but, uh, you know, he, he, like I said, he, he wouldn't even let us, somebody with Jose's co- uh, complexion, he wouldn't even let us shape, shape, them, shape you up. Wow. His, his, see, he, he, um, he did more like um, gentleman haircuts. You yeah. know, like I seen him. Old seen, school, natural, like just. The way, well, this is what he always described. The way, the, his personal cut was, he used a straight razor, bro. Just a straight, a uh, solid straight razor and a comb. Water, wet it. I've seen him do it numerous times. Uh-huh. Take it down. It's a straight, no, it's a straight razor cut, taper and everything, with just with just the comb and the straight. It's wow. it was incredible. And 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 sheer over comb, he could fade better and faster than Clippers. Wow, you know wow. what I mean. But that was you know seventy years ago. At that time, it was about 50, 60 years ago. Huh. So that's what he was. You know, he made a whole bunch of money in the barbering business, but. Just as the barber in business is, you know, he had bad habits. You know, he 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 drank and he lost it all, so he had to teach till wow. till he's done. And true story, quick point, right? This guy, man, he was like, I think he was like seventy six years old at the time. He was in there teaching as well. But listen, he did not eat any cooked food, all raw food. He juiced everything. Wow. And when I tell you, he was one of the biggest dudes in that prison, not in the barber shop. I'm talking 76 years old. He was one of the biggest rip dudes in that prison, just eating, eating raw food, good shit. Stop, you know what I mean? He cleaned it, but he unfortunately he had to work till till he was done. That uh, that's that's the case with a lot of barbers, man. Like we we don't people don't understand the 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 
you know what the end game to this shit. Well, preparing for the future, yeah. That's the whole really thing. People it. don't understand this. <laughs> Listen, man, you ain't paying tax. You ain't getting no uh, retirement, social security, none of that. Like that's all you. Like, <laughs> you, you know, my, my, you my, know what I'm saying? Hey, look, yeah, that cash, that cash is good, right? You know, my but thing is a lot of barbers don't. Out? They don't prepare for the future. That's a fact. Yeah. They figure, you know, they'll go out. They'll make two hundred dollars in that one day, three hundred dollars. They'll go out spend it because thinking, oh, I'm gonna make it again tomorrow. Like you can't, you can't have that mindset. No, but you know when you I mean? get to a certain point, that is the mindset. Like that is, that is. But you, you shouldn't. <laughs> but you gotta prepare it for it. Doesn't matter you know, if you, you shut it. You could. <laughs> it's different when you say, "Listen, you know." It's different when you it's, what you should do and what you could do is two totally different things. Yeah, but that, that's that's crazy. I mean, it is what it is. Some, you know. But uh, okay, we got we got sidetracked again. Side, the, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, the transition of me coming home from prison and starting. Like the okay. different cuts and stuff yes. like that. Okay, so what that was, I came home in um, December of December of 07. I started cutting January 21st. No, wait, I came home. Yeah, I started cutting January 21st, 08 with Jazz. In and the barbershop. In, in, yeah, in, in an actual barbershop. First barbershop I ever applied. I walked in, I said, buddy. You looking for some help? He was like, "You license?" I was like, "Yeah." And he, no, I didn't have to do any cut, anything. He was like, "All right, come on in." And and at that at that time, I was in the halfway house in Scranton. I had just came home. I ain't had shit. Yeah. I ain't had no clippers. I ain't had nothing. And um, he was like, "What do you got?" I was like, "I don't have nothing." He was like, "All right, say less tomorrow." Just because of the license, it, it was so rare out here at that time. You know what I mean? And uh, him and his wife went and got me stuff. So the next day, he literally had me at work. Wow. First barbershop I ever applied to. Like, So he put all the supplies for you? Yeah, he bought me clay. He bought me Andy's. He bought me Andy Masters. Not no 76ers yet or nothing. <laughs> but since I was still in the halfway house and then just came home, I'm on parole and, and, you know, doing the rehabilitation. I got, uh, what is it? It's, uh, the thing from Career Link. Oh, yeah, the, the job where you have to report or something? No, bro, when they give you money to get supplies if you're actually working. Oh, oh yeah, I don't. Uh, they gave me like $1,500, bro. That, that's how I first got on. That's how I got everything because I was, you know, complying with all the – but and, and they brought it to me. It was, it was dope. It was, it's it, like a help that they a, give yeah, you I'm, Listen, I'm going to figure out the name of that, and we're going to operate that because it's a great program for any um, – you know, incarcerated individual just coming home. If you have your barber's license, man, and you don't have tools or to come home to, they'll they'll help you out, bro. Yeah. As long as you're complying and all your stipulations and all that, it, it was a great program. They gave me fit. I was scared. They could have get my one <laughs> homie. I did. They got him a chair and all that. Wow. I was worried. I did like fifteen hundred. He did like five thousand. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was worried. I'm like, dang, you think they're Where gonna the do money this? come from, boy? No, but I'm just saying, it, it was a blessing. It put me on. It, it, you know, it nah, nice, on. nice. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's out there. Damn, that's gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, no, but that's crazy. That's that's dope, yeah, bro. That's anybody dope can do it. If you, if you listen, if you have been incarcerated and are complying with probation for all that. There's ways out there that you could get help, man. Don't think, don't, don't think of it as hopeless, bro. Cause it's not. I'm listening. It's not. But anyway, okay. So long story short, fat girl skinny, right? I come home. Jazz hires me, whatever, right? Uh-huh. Next mind day, you, put you to work. Oh, but now mind you, there was a couple dudes in there from Philly that knew how to cut, and this, that, and third, right? No straight razor shape ups. Nothing like that's really in real world. So when I started working with Jazz, you know, I didn't even know about shaver. You know, I'm. I, I'm working with Jazz. I'm like, damn, what is that? He's like, is it a shape? You know? Really? So you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, the yeah, ball the electric chair. Yeah, I right. never, I'm like, I, I ne- you know, because I learned how to cut in, in in jail. Like, I never, you know, maybe before that, like, I messed people's hair up, shaping them up, but, but not never seriously. Like, I never wanted to learn. So I came home and I, you know, straight razor shape up, all that. And, and the dude that taught me, he taught um, blade reduction top to bottom. You work down. Like, if we had to do a ball fade in jail, bro, you weren't putting the ball line in it. You were starting at you were starting at the top and blade reducing down. And then sometimes you get done with that cut, and it's like the ball got to go up. So you, it, it was totally – yeah, uh, it was cumbersome. It was a cumbersome method. So when I got with Jazz, you know, I started – this is the best uh, analogy I can make. 
The boring prison taught me how to pass my test. Jazz taught me how to make money off this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like how to do, how to actually make money in that with the Beijing. Mm -hmm. Still, I'm still me and him is still one of the only people that mess with the actual Beijing out here. Like I don't, I do not know anybody else. The airbrush and that, but with the Beijing, you know, the Beijing. But jazz, yeah, it was, it was a, uh, it, it, it was a transition to say the least. But the thing about it was, right, and this, it was like going to another, going to school again, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was in the halfway house during that period, right? I didn't care about, mo I didn't care about money. Yeah, yeah. I was good. I was taken care of. I just wanted to learn. You know, I, at that time, it was I wanted to, you know, absorb every aspect of the barbering that I was. I, I was hyped to be in the shop, and and at that time, jazz was already. Man, he was already solidified in Scram, man. Like so he, he basically took he, you under his wing yeah, and kind of like showed without, you what, listen, what was with, good, you know? Without a doubt. I am indebted to him truly still to this day. That is my man. That's dope. That is my brother. Like, you know, he was he is a real solid dude, man. And yes, it, shit, me and him, we was like the Miami Vice of Barbara. <laughs> Fucking tough. You get what I'm saying? Did you get to make a lot of um, clientele off of? That barbershop. Yes, I have a lot. Okay, so that's. But first okay. of all, how long were you there for? Uh, in the half. Well, well I, okay. Not I, the halfway house, working with Jazz in the yeah. barbershop. The barbershop. It ended up eight years. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. I was in the halfway house for like two months, working there all the time. And then in them two months, I had built up so much, so much flow. And, you know, that I was like, I live in Wilkesbury. You know, I had a home plan. In there, that, so I got out the halfway house. And I was driving to Scram for shit. That was like eight from. I worked with Jazz from 08 till till the end of 2014. So you talking you talking seven years? Seven, every every bit of years. seven years. So you basically got established within a few months. Yeah, that was listen. It wasn't like it wasn't how it is now, man. Yeah, like it, it was not. Well, talk about it, that. What you mean? When I tell you what, um, back in the day, man, there was not, you know, in Scranton, there was three urban barber shops at the most. wilkes -Barre, I don't even know if that's that. <laughs> you know, you're talking a lot of years ago, man. But it was it was not how it was back then. Now there's a barber shop on every corner down here. No, there's a ton, yeah. And good barbers, that's the thing. See, back then, it wasn't. It was limited to a few people and shit. Out of them few couple people, if you had your license, you were really golden. Yeah. Because you were legal. You know, if it, listen, anybody would have hired you just to have, you know, and Jazz had his license and I had his license. So we, we built a whole lot of things, man. You know, it was, you know, it was always his shop, but <coughs> you could ask anybody that know. Like, well, I, even to this I day, it's hard. I to it. Like, you e know even saying? to this day, it's hard to find barbers that have license. Mm. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, there, right now, there isn't even a school out here. No. No. Right not now, there's only, there's, there's only one in Not even Tokyo. in this county. Yeah. In Luzerne County, Correct. there's not one school. Nope. I think the closest one is about an hour and 15 Valley. minutes away. Yeah. Or Lancaster, one yeah. of them shit. Which yeah. is crazy to me. Yep, there used to be one in Hazleton. You know, and I also feel that they make it so hard, right? I mean, you know, I just feel that the, the, the I can't say the government, but whatever, you know, thing it is that, that you have to go through to open up a school, they make it so hard for you to do so. That nobody even tries. Well, the school, yes, I could, I could, I could say, I could attribute to that. Yes, indeed, the school is tough because, you know, uh, most people when they're when they're when they're uh, going to school, they seek financial aid. You know, they seek uh, student yeah. loans. And then that process is crazy just to get accredited through the state to get. That's a fact. Or federal, you know, uh -huh. some of it is federal, you know, but it is, and especially if you got a record, like mo you know. Most barbers that are trying to do, you know, because I know on one hand how many people have, how many barbers out here have their manager's license, let mm -hmm. alone I know like one that has his teachers. Yeah. And, that's and you know what's the crazy thing? Like, you'll be surprised the amount of people that want to become a barber today. That's a fact. That's a fact. But, that, you know, it, again, it, it's all about... Um, you're right. You do gotta jump through a lot of people. You gotta jump. You gotta jump hurdles. It, you know, it's, it's difficult. You know, it, they they do make it tough. There was that one school that was only the Joe Lee. Joe Lee was the only school that was doing barbering Barber, program. Right, and that's cool. Yeah. And it yeah. was Hazleton, which is like twenty minute drive. Longer um, than that. Yeah, like half Longer hour, let's say. And then the snow. In you January? know, but then they closed. They closed. The pandemic hit. They shut down. 
And afterwards, maybe I think that I heard that they were open for like a month or two and they shut down. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what happened to all those people that were going to the school? What happened to their hours? You know what I mean? Like all well, that yeah, stuff is uh, like uh, the hours as a school. You have to you're, you're supposed to keep a student's uh, hourly records on hand for at least five years. On hand, yeah. You know but what I'm saying? My but thing is, when a company, uh, you know, dissolves, like the dissolution, of, I, who knows what? Who knows what happened? There? The accountants probably got that shit. They, they trying to. So now, like, they, they have, all that money or whatever, the, whatever loan that they took out or whatever it is, like, what happens with that? Like, that's that's crazy. But yeah, Sean, I mean, yes, sir, listen, I gotta eliminate that. Right. You know, you imagine like, yo, I still owe 15 grand, but the school shut down. Nah, they gotta man, do John, something with them. John Fetterman, can we can we do something to make this shit easier, bro? <laughs> you know, but I also <laughs> heard. For, I, I, I also heard for a while that um, they were trying to pass something here in Pennsylvania that you didn't need to have a license to become a barber, but you needed certain. Um, you gotta meet certain hours criteria. record. Yeah, you, you, certain criteria, but. Uh, that, 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 that got shut down, but then it's like, okay, well, now. I agree with that, though, because here's the main thing, man. The protection of the public is the the, the State Board of Barber Examiners, they, their number one thing is the protection of the public. Uh -huh. And I agree with that, man, because there's a lot. Listen, <coughs> I've, been, I've been doing this a long time. I've worked in over, over 10 shops yeah. in my career. That's pr probably more than, you know, but I've worked in. To be honest with you, man, a lot of barbers aren't practicing proper sanitation. They're just not moving right, and that's yeah. the truth. No. You know, there's a lot of things out there that people don't realize that, you you know, could spread so fast. And if you're cutting 10 people a day, let's say, right, at the end of the week, you're doing 50 haircuts. Those 50 people come into contact with another, that's it. you know what I mean? So that stuff, you know, Absolutely. can spread like crazy, man. So, so I agree with the, um, you know, the litany of mitigational circumstances they make people go through. I agree with that 100%. But if I could do it, anybody could do it. You know, like, you know unfortunately, I, right now, it's so, over here anyway, it's hard to, to, to get licensed. It's hard to to become a barber, a legal barber. Um, you know? So I just feel like, you know, they got to... I don't know, make it a little bit easier to open a school. But don't you feel that, that that's a good thing because it's keeping certain people out of it? That No, yeah, but those. But what know, I'm trying to say is... Because that's the whole thing about it. Regulating it is, is great. Right. It's, it's just good. Because everybody know? shouldn't be cut kind of heavy. But give you the opportunity, <laughs> open schools, do something, figure something out to help those people become what they want to do. Those who want to, but here's the thing. If you want to learn something, nobody will ever teach you. You will find way you you will learn you i'm not saying they will never do if you want to find out how to become a legal barber in pa it's possible yeah listen we have my man yeah how'd you get your license jose apprenticeship is is cable it, it can't School be wasn't done for me, bro. listen i went to oof, abi i'm more in inspired York. by that i was in jail when i got my shit i had Hours to study and time to cut. And I was cutting 10 heads a day, messing them yeah. I'm more impressed by the fact that someone acquired it outside of that. You know, I tried going to school, that man. To it, was, is... it was crazy. I went to, I traveled to New York on Mondays. So I would wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, hop on the March, March trucks, go to ABI in Manhattan. I was there all Monday, the whole day. So just how, imagine how long it was taking me just to put in those hours. I get it, bro. Listen, you know what I had to do? I wake up at 6 for count. And then go to the barbershop, cut a bunch of hair. I had nothing else but to, but to study and cut hair. Imagine a person out here going there. Like, that to me is more phenomenal than coming out of prison with your barber license. That shit, they pay you in there to go to school. No, yeah. I they pay you in there to go to school. It's 25, 25, what, 24, $25,000? At least. Yeah, they, At pay, least. they pay me in there to go to school. That's insane. Yeah, they pay me. It was only like 32 cents an hour, but I mean, Some. at the end of the day, it paid for the cable, <laughs> paid for the cable. And it got you licensed and all mm, that. That's mm -hmm. what's up. And on top of that, you went to that program, they gave you money to get all your tools. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to think of that, man. I'm telling you, it's through uh, CareerLink, man. It's, uh, shit, if you, could, if you could verify, man, that, you know, like I had a very, it, you know, there's, you don't. They don't just give you that. Shit. No, like, I know. There's have, certain you know, things you have to. Fit, you Jazz know. had a fill. Yeah, you know. He said, he, "Yeah, he has a job with me if he can get equipment." Yes. And that's what, and they were like, "All right, fill out what you need, and we'll get it for you." Well, 
and the, and they did it, and that's how I got. And literally since then, man, that was, that was mid two thousand and eight, and I've I've been cutting hair ever since. Huh. Want, told. We gotta look that up. I wonder if they still have that program. Yeah, I know they do. I know they do. I'm I'm trying to think of it right now. <coughs> and that's probably just in the state of Pennsylvania. It, well, right? yeah, it's it's a county funded thing. Yeah. Uh, Career Link is is a county funded thing. Maybe state funded, but. They will help you out, man. They will help you acquire tools to the same thing. You ain't even got to be a barber, bro. Huh. If you were, um, you know, licensed or accredited in any kind of trade upstate, you come home, career link, you're complying with all your uh, parole, pr- probation stipulations. They will give you money, man, to buy tools, That's man. That's crazy. That's dope. Yeah. So people really don't have an excuse. You, you don't have an excuse. You, you know, like, I could say, yeah, it's hard. It was hard, but. Shit, imagine being the only white urban barber. Well, know, so we'll like, talk about that. The other thing, all right, so so you've been you, you were working with with uh with jazz. with jazz. You got all your equipment. Right. Now what was the hardest thing for you to overcome at first? Uh probably the adversity. Okay, being the only that, that was more more so ain't the adversity. Just you know, I've had people tell me to my face, I'll never let a white boy cut my hair. <laughs> you know, some people and feel then, like that for some reason. And then I cut and then I cut the hair. And they come back, nah, I don't want nobody else but him to come back. <laughs> you know, so, but it, it's just, it, it was tough, man, you know. And and at that time, that was like when the Barbershop movie came out with Ice Cube and the other dudes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. People, oh, you like the white boy? <laughs> no, but. You saw that? <laughs> That's cool. He's an actor. I'm, this is real life. I'm trying to pay he bills. Cause, this is real life. <laughs> I'm trying to pay bills because, can I, like, can I, oh. you know. Yeah, so the adversity, that, the. the, the... Difficult as hell. It does not like it is now, man. You see white. White urban barbers and all that back then, man. If you were a white barber, man, you were uh, uh, doing the old head. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like the old head service. It wasn't no sharp, you know. And everybody, uh, uh, uh. I dealt with that for years, you know. And and it is what it is. Probably you know? still even to this day. Ah, absolutely. Like when I do walk, that's why he don't know, man. I tell him I don't like to do walkings, bro. I don't like to do walkings. <laughs> Because I feel like I'm dealing with that still to this day. I like to cut people that ex- know what they're, ex- you know, know that what they're expecting. Just they have that all, yes, yeah. I've already come to To me, it's more comfortable than earning somebody over that's going to be bending over backwards to look in the mirror. It's just every time I do something with the Clippers, like, yeah. I don't need the money that bad, bro. Yeah. Like, just go to, you know. And, and that's what's funny. When, when we had a uh, shop in the Steamtown Mall, bro, there's 12 barbers in there, right? About maybe like five of them knew how to cut good. You know what wow. I mean? But people would come in and see me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white dude. You know? Nah, I ain't going in. And then go to somebody that just, just learned how, just is learning how to cut. Get bodied. And, and I'm looking at him like, you know, hey, I should have went to the white dude. <laughs> That's crazy. No, not like that. It's crazy. <laughs> but I've seen it done. Literally, man. Jazz will attest to this too, man. The one dude, man, old head from Philly, he was. And this was at the first shop that I ever worked with. I was working with Jazz for a couple months. I went to the convenience or something next door. I come back in. I walked in behind. He was like, I never let a white dude come in. I said, bro, all right. I'm not begging you to cut your hair, bro. Like, you know, like I'm not begging. Like, that's fine. Troopy told with your attitude like that, I'd rather not cut your hair. Yeah. Because no matter what I do, it's, it's not never going to be, gonna be it's right. It's not going to be satisfactory. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be like, nah, white dude, you know? And and then one time Jazz wasn't there and I had to cut his hair and he was like, damn. Yeah, not with that kind of energy. Now, I'm not saying nothing to take anything away from Jazz, but Jazz will testify to this shit too, man. Well, even even now people still like that, man. People walk in and whatever. I'll be like, hey, you got an appointment, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, oh, no, sit with him. And that, oh, is he nice? No, you're right. You're right. You know what I mean? You're like, right. come on, man. Yeah, you know? imagine that when you're white. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's even harder. You know, like imagine, you know, imagine being but, a, I, imagine being a shop owner. Like, yeah, go to the white dude. He, he, he was like, what? Why is happening with you? What did I do, what did I I do to with you? you? You know that guy they you cut. They did something to you. You know that guy you cut that you always do to Beijing, and he comes and he pays you what, like, like for the whole month ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a walker. Yeah, he was. He was a walker. I'll give you that. First thing he said to me was, "Yo, is he nice?" 
I go, I, yeah. True what story. Was it? What, what did I tell him? I said, yo, if you don't like the haircut, I'm paying for That's it. That's a fact. He was a walk-in. That now was he one, pays you a month facts. ahead of time. That was one of the first walk-ins I ever cut here, too. Rob. It was, yeah, yeah. 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 And now he brings his wife, too. And yep. all that. He got a membership. That's a fact. <laughs> Bro, once a month, he yeah. pays him ahead of time. That's right? it. And, and it's not like it's that's a deal, just, man. Wow, that's crazy. Deal, that's just man. what it is. But you know, don't underestimate nobody, man. You shouldn't. You really shouldn't. It happens though. This, and to defend that, bro, it's it's a like a scientific. You know, people stick to the people stick to. You know, it's it's a survival mechanism. Uh, and all that. Yeah. You don't see. Uh, yeah, you don't see the impalas running around the lions. You're like, nah, he's cool. No, like, or he, yeah, he's good. You know, you know, it's a, you know, it's a survival mechanism. It's ingrained in us. I get it. I get. It. I'm just too. I proven myself too. You know. But you know, the other thing to consider too, if you're doing a walk-in in a barber shop, you don't know nobody. Like, you can't just assume. Oh, I want the nicest person in here. Blah blah blah. Do your nah, research. That's a fact. Listen, if you're walking in a barber shop and you just walking in. Please don't expect to get in the nicest dude's chair. It don't happen like that. Yeah. That's why, like, it's it's unrealistic expectations. You're going to get your feelings hurt uh-huh. every time. <coughs> every well, time. Was, don't had, do that. Don't we had one guy, guy come in. He said, I want the nicest barber in here. Yeah, sure. Everybody's working, right? <laughs> oh, was this one old? Oh. No, mind. right? So he was, we were like, oh. You know, I told him, <laughs> you know, I told him, I go, you know what? Come here. I'm the nicest barber in here, right? And he goes, okay, when, you got me next. I go, no, I'm booked till next week, but I do have a lunchtime. If you want to take my lunchtime, this is the price. Right. Do you want it? He stayed standing there for like 45 minutes, thinking, walking back and forth, watching everybody cut here, and then ended up leaving. You know, like you can't, you can't. You wanted the nicest barber, right? One, you're making, you're going to try to make other barbers feel a type of way. You know, some people are just going to be, you know, one that's intimidating to some people. You know, you walk in, yo, I, I want this, I yeah, want bro, that, blah, 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 blah. Who, who the fuck do you think you are walking in the shop? And that's what makes... I want the nicest And barber. that's what makes like some of these barbers up, feel bro. intimidated. You know what I'm trying to right. say? Like, so you imagine, like, someone like like Quiet Alex. Alex was quiet. Yeah. How's he going to handle that situation? Very timidly. You get what I'm trying to say? So right Very off the rip, timidly. he's already kind of, like, nervous, you know? Very like timidly. He say, you got me next. You should have told him, oh, I got you next month. Yes. You know, no, but like, I'm just saying, like, like it don't what, work like that. What's going on in a person's head that they gonna walk in a barbershop on Friday at four o'clock or a Saturday midday and be like, "Yeah, I want the nicest barber." Like right you here. show enough from from uh, you know what I'm saying, bro? They act like we're just waiting for them to yeah, come. Yeah, oh in. yeah, we. You know what? I was come waiting. For, <laughs> right. Yeah. I True know, story no, though. That no, that's just people have <clears throat> un, unworldly. There's there's two things people people have to understand right now. Two things. One. Walk-ins, it's very rare that you can walk into a barbershop on a Saturday or a Friday, hell, even a Thursday, and get into the chair within an hour or That's two hours. Fact. Two, Preach. haircuts are not $20 anymore. Preach. You know, you have, I, the other day I had somebody walk Stop. in, he was like, yo, how much for a haircut and get my beard done? I told him 40 bucks, and he was like, what the hell? Yeah, imagine that. He wearing them eight hundred dollar big ass blocky ass Balenciaga sneakers. <laughs> Talk about forty dollars. Forty. What did so, you do? You yeah. wanna pay for your head cut, bro? You the flyest dude on Instagram, but bro, I don't even think you can get an eighth of, uh, an, an, an eighth for forty dollars right now. No, oh, I don't know. I don't know about it. Eight for what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all right, so those two things you got to realize: one, twenty haircuts are not twenty dollars anymore. I mean, there may be somebody you know out there that has, or, 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 or it is charging every, twenty bucks. Every penny a word for twenty dollar haircut. <laughs> you know, we but, we gonna put a sign up to say we fix twenty dollar haircuts. You know, but and hey, listen, if you think maybe thirty, forty dollars is too much for a haircut, guys, there's other options out there. Other barbershops. Yeah. You know, um, and you're a pain in the whole ass. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Not Wait, all of here them. Here go my man right here. How much do you think he finna pay he for pulled a, He pulled up. Yo, he pulled on like, the door like three times. He got 35 for you. He pulled on the door three times. I, I know. He probably got 35 for you. The sign says closed. He, that's, <laughs> on the door it says closed. You see anybody? Yeah, though. Yeah, no. I don't get it. He probably got Yo, remember the one time with uh, man on? I think it was just me, you, and him. Boy walked in. He had the shades on and everything. He like, yo, what's up? I need a haircut right now. Everybody's like, it's after hours, bro. What are you like, da-da-da. Oh, I got $60 for whoever. 
When I go sixty dollars, <laughs> I charge that for regular. <laughs> you walked out. That's that what ass. <laughs> Yo, that's that's what, a regular cut. That's a regular cut. Yeah. <laughs> he goes sixty. He said, I, "My boy, I charge that for a regular appointment." Sixty dollars. Oh my god. You know, and I get it that maybe some people think that it is a lot. Okay. But um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that haircuts have stayed the same price for so long. Here's the thing, man, and I say this all the time. You're going to get the haircut you pay for. Yeah. Let that let that resonate. That's that marinade good. in your body, you're going to get the haircut you pay for. Yeah. Trust me, your you barber. Know, you know, but there isn't, I'm not going to lie, man. In some places that you get a nice, decent cut for like 25, 20 bucks. Like, you, Where? You will. Show me. You know, like there's. Show me. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. Tell her I mean, you you'll get no, a I'm decent just, cut for twenty bucks, saying. you know. But you know, um, share it to the people. <clears throat> I don't know how barbers are doing that now, still for twenty dollars a haircut. Like that's something that you know, those are old prices, you know. All right, so getting over the fact that um, you were probably the only white dude in the shop, and people felt that's the everywhere. That's not that was <laughs> that's still everywhere. No, not, not no. Come on, there has to be a time where you where there was other people, another white boy in there. No. Oh, yeah, but not doing the same shit I'm doing, though. <laughs> he was, like, stylist, that dude. But, but, I, but, no, it's tough, man, the adversity, man. It was hard. But, however, I was able to put, put, you know, I put in a lot of work, man. Like, listen, I did not get here just by, like, stumbling into this shit or being funny or, or like, man, like, I, I, I work, I've, I've built a foundation, bro. Ask anybody that knows me from me. Solid dude across with the bar, like you know, it, it is what it is, man. That, look, and that's the truth, man. I've been cutting people so long. I have people I haven't cut for 12, 13 years, man. You know, it's it's not about the it's not about cutting somebody one time, man. It's about the retention of client. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? That one person you cut could be the dude that comes to you every two weeks for ten years. Yeah, and you passing them over because he might not be giving you. Five dollars, you know, the five dollars more than somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it's about, man. It's about it's about client retention. It's not about just anybody could cut somebody one time. Shit, I, you know, go to uh, a salon, get your hair cut. <laughs> go to a salon, they'll cut your hair one time. Where's they don't the super cut sports they, clips. They don't give what a shit. Sports they, clips, yeah. Them? They don't care if you come back, bro. It's about client retention. <laughs> right. Yeah, true story though. Right. It's about client retention, man. You know, it's about like. You know, see, the thing is, like, I've been doing this so long that most of the people that I cut, they're not, like, they're not just considered, like, clients. Or, they, these are my friends, bro. Well, listen, man, after, you know, fucking, like you said, 10, 12, 10, 13 10, years, bro, man, like, you know? you've seen them grow up. You've seen, yeah, you've seen them have kids. You, you probably cut their kids. Who knows? Look, they done been with me through a lot, just in general. I done been through them, with them through a lot, man. You know, it's, it's not, like, I'm, I'm not... I'm not so much monetarily invested into it yeah. as I am so much as, um, I don't know, philanthropically invested, if that makes sense. Oh, like, you know, like I, I, I'd rather be attainable. I don't forget where I came from, man. You know, it was hard for me to get where I'm at. Yeah. I don't forget those people. Um, I'm trying to be accessible to everybody that helped me get to where I am. You know, I'm where I'm at. Like, I... I'm good. I am my own entity in a sense. Like I, I you know, where I, I I cut so many people that wherever I go, they're they're just gonna go. Gonna you know what I'm saying? It's not about it's not about location, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's about how they feel with you. Right. They they come from, they family to me. It's the relationship. You know? It's the relationship. Yeah. You can't just. Yeah. This, this shit. It's, yeah. it's not just the cut and dry. I tell you what, man. Well, I, you know why I don't like cutting walk kids either, man. I feel like a prostitute or something. It's like wham, bam, give me the money, da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to build. I like to bust it up with people. I like to know people. You know, it's it's like, I, I feel as though as the shit that I give is not just a haircut. I get it. It's, it's a whole vibe. Now, you say you've been cutting people for 10, 12 years, and this question goes for you, too, Jose. I know you've been cutting a lot of people for a lot of years, too, but... um. Do you guys still ask your clients what do they want? No. No? 
The ones I've been cutting. I for feel two, like I have to do that. I have clients for no, no, several years, too, and I have to, like, I ask can't say no. Yeah, I've just, to, just to confirm, but for real, a lot of the people I cut, dude, and that's why I say it comes down to more than just cutting skill. It's a personality. Yeah, involved. no, of course. Like, I can literally body some of my people. And I've done it. You know, not nice no, that's like, but and they still gonna come back. And I know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's certain people that no matter what, they just gonna come. Come back. You might make them feel good. You might make them laugh. How about you, Jose? No, I don't really. I actually the same like, yeah, customers that I keep cutting all the time. Same thing. Yeah, same thing or whatever. You know what I mean? But no. As far as what are you getting? No. Unless they switched it up before. That's a fact, right, right, you know? right. Unless they switched it up recently or something like that. Mm -hmm. I say same thing. Yeah. You're getting the same, same thing? thing? Yeah, okay, same cool. Thing. Me too. I, I feel like I'm going to be honest. Same sometimes, thing. sometimes I just start cutting and yeah. I just do it. I don't same even ask. Thing. But, um, but yeah. I remember one time there was this guy. I, I've cut him so much, dude. It was actually a sharp cuts. And I'm cutting him. And this whole time I'm having a conversation with someone else. My customer's Aww. in the chair and I'm cutting. And I'm cutting, I get done with the haircut, I'm cleaning them up, and he's in the mirror like this. And I go, what's up, bud? Anything else? No, I just, you know, he barely even looked at my head. And he just stood like this. Like, how did I do his haircut without really, like, you know what I'm trying to say? That shit's still good, though. <laughs> and I was like, that well, it looked good. good though. There's something called muscle memory. That's a fact. And that's pretty much what it was. Well, dude. yeah, not even muscle. with your brain, man. It's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like... It's called muscle memory. Subconscious. You're subconscious. Here, perfect, perfect testament yeah. to it, right? Almost every night, when I'm the last one here, I walk out, lock the door, get in the car, make it like a half a block. And be like, did I lock that shit? That shit happens to me all the time, <laughs> too. Did I lock that shit? And hey, you you're did, but you don't remember. Back and be like, I knew I did. Or, but, you know, but you're doing something, dude. It's just muscle memory, you know? Mm -hmm. You just do it without realizing it's, it. It's right, like a reflex, true story. Right? <coughs> but, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I basically, you know, just, I'll ask him the same thing. Or, and to be honest, sometimes I'll just start cutting. You know, and, okay. And yeah, but, like, but you a fucking robot. <laughs> and yeah, but then yeah, you know, just yeah. hoping that you know afterwards you're like, oh, he, shit, don't I miss. Ask <laughs> he don't miss. He don't miss. You get used to it. I try to get. I'm waiting on him. He don't miss. <laughs> he don't miss. Thirteen, fourteen a day. Don't miss. No, nah, not every day. And I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not saying every day. I said I seen thirteen. He don't miss. <laughs> what he is can't. um? What about you, Chris? You ask your customers, all of them? Yeah, pretty much the same thing you guys said. I always ask them all. Same thing, you are new. Yeah. There's a uh, client Talk, that I... man. <laughs> Come on, man. Talk. There's clients that I even say, oh, let's do something new. Let's change your style. Like, let's you do something new. Like, Come on. Let's volunteering for more work? <laughs> <laughs> what you want, one blade over? That's it? <laughs> you don't want a designer? You ain't volunteering? A line? <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of guys do that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but, you know. Yeah. A man is coming to your chair for a service, and he wants a certain thing. Listen, Chris. Give that man a service. Chris, Chris, one of them. He another one. He don't miss. Yeah. He, he don't miss. I'm dead ass, bro. Like, it, it, that's the thing I love about this shop in particular, as opposed to um, previous shops that I worked at. Tell me about the differences. What's up? Oh, the difference is I love coming here, man. I, I, like, I love coming here. I, I work in hood shops where it's like the worst energy ever. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. just the worst, just negative. As far as, like, the employees or, like, yeah, what do you mean? Man, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Like, just, negative people and shit. Yeah, I, listen, I am one of the sometimes, <laughs> but the, the energy here is just so, it's, 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 it's pure. <laughs> it's all no for real though it's authentic it's authentic though and it's good and it's like i don't know it's just different man i, I was like truth be told i like i said bro i worked in at least 10 shops in my life shit i worked in about like six in the last like four or five years man <laughs> you know but it, it it i feel the most comfortable around people like y'all no not just the energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, know, you know what I'm saying, yeah. like good, and and not only that, the, the talent pool is unparalleled. The talent pool in this shop is unparalleled 
by any shop I've ever worked at ever. These guys, these guys are nice. You, you, you know, oh, that's another that thing goes, we should talk about when I when I first started working here, to because I had stepped my shit up. Because I was working by myself. Well, talk about that. Pandemic hit, right? Yeah. Boom. What happened? I had shut down shop. Right. I had stopped. You stopped cutting for how long? 13 months. Wow. 13 months. 13 months. So how was that transition you was in the house back or? into to cutting? Um, it sucked. I want to keep you in PUA. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, forget I'm about playing. the no, I'm playing. No, I'm playing. Forget I'm about all with, that other stuff. I'm playing with you. I'm talking about as far yeah. as cutting. But yeah, as far as cutting, uh, I did not cut for 13 months. Okay. The only person I cut was my father. Huh. For 13 months from March 2020 till May 2021, I did not cut no one. After 13 months, what'd you do? Uh, I had, I, well, I waited, truth be told, I. I don't want to. I had. I waited to get my double shot of vaccine. Mm-hmm. Double shot of vaccine. I got that until I could go back to work, and then um, I went back. I uh, I went back to work, and um, you know. It, Were you cutting it out of your house at all? No. I, listen. You 13, cut nobody. Nobody. Listen. When I tell you, thirteen months. The only person I cut was my father, man. Okay. People don't believe me. No, that's hard they to still do. Did, they, they still did. Listen, I took a whole loss. Like, you know you know the loss I took. I, yeah. I didn't care. I didn't, my, my, you know, my health, my father's health was more important than anything else, man. And, uh, you know, that's what happened. And truth be told, I'm. I'm now, you know, I don't mean to cut you off, but you right. owned a barbershop. You had a barbershop before the pandemic. Yeah. Right? You shut that down. You stopped yeah. working. Yeah. Um. How long was it before you decided? You know what? I, I gotta be. Able, I gotta do something. I can't. Uh, it was right about when the PUA stopped. <laughs> 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 it was right about that. No, I'm playing. But eventually, you know, it had to come to pass. Like my thing was, you know, and I had to shop, and I paid. I paid thousands in bills keeping that shit open. Uh-huh. No one was going there. Yeah. I was waiting, you know, and then they came out and said, "Well, we're not going to have the." Vaccine till Jay. My father was going through. He had a skin condition. They had him on uh, immune immune system, like um, like to help to help boost his immune no, system. No, 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 because they they were misdiagnosing his condition uh-huh. as psoriasis, and psoriasis is an overactive immune system. So they had immune. They had him on immune suppressants. Oh wow! Yeah. During so if the, he did during, get I'm, sick or something like that, no, listen, that's listen. What I'm telling you, during the height of the pandemic, my guy. Yeah. Like nah, literally, it's, it's, like during wow. the height of it. Yeah. You know, people don't understand it. I don't mm-hmm. really, re- and, and truth be told, no one besides my father and me will know the extent of how serious it was, man. Because yeah. it was really serious, and, and I didn't. Nah, wanna, it was a big thing. Though. You know, I I didn't want to, you know contribute to that or even take the chance of no i get it i get it you know so to me it was nothing like like this is what it is me and him made it out alive bro so, yeah you know. thank god yeah but uh but yeah they, but after we both got our uh uh shots, they, shots. They, yeah i was like i'm going back to work you know just so happened you were still flown you know what i mean and well a lot of people don't know the, the the shop you had i had gotten from you um and we spoke during the pandemic. We were like, look, listen, if you by any chance wanted to get rid of it, you'd let me know. That's a fact. And, um, but I also offered the first thing was you always got a seat there. And, um, and even and if I, I had to put what, one in, I was like, yo, you all, you'll have a spot here if this is what you want to do. And I'll tell you what, man, God works in mysterious ways. Now, after you started, after the pandemic, you didn't come work for me no. or with me. No. You went and started working somewhere closer to home, correct? That's a fact. Right were you by street. yourself? How many people were in the shop? I was. I was down. Listen, man, a hippie dude, man, he gave me a play, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. It was right down the street from my house, like, you know. And to be told, it was, it was um, kind of by accident. I seen him building it through the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I knew he just like I had kind of raw deal because of the pandemic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're taking, you know, we're taking the house. And uh, I said, look, you know, you need a barber, man. And dude had 
uh, pursued another avenue of mm-hmm. income during that. Now, he was he was a barber himself. He was. He, okay. Yeah, he has a license, man. Mm-hmm. Dude has a, good dude. Listen, good dude, man. He helped me out, man. It was a great shop, dope shop. But uh, how was it working by yourself? Boring as shit. <laughs> you know what as well as I do. Yeah. Listen, before I came here, I was working by myself for like four years. Not by myself, but it just it uh Felt. yeah. You know what happens like is is when you're working by yourself for four years, and you're only cutting the same people week in and week out. And you know you, you're you're only doing passable haircuts. Yeah. Okay. You know the minimum at you know. The minimum haircuts, and so you know when I came when I came here, and seen what was going on, it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, uh, imposing at first. I'm not gonna lie, like I, <laughs> I no, truth be told, it was intimidating. I was intimidating when I first started working here with y'all, man. I was very intimidating. I'm like, dang, you know, like I said, man, for four years I was just doing passable. Haircuts, you know, yeah. left to my own discretion. So what, what what made you feel more comfortable with everything? Uh, truth be told, step my game up. Okay. Not getting no, to know. Tr- no, like, true. Huh? Not getting to know everybody else a little bit better and feeling more comfortable with them? No, because, like, here's my thing, right? I, tr- I trust them by proxy through okay. you. Because I trust you. Uh-huh. You're my man. Like, I... There's listen. You could look on my Facebook that I worked with Jose one week, right? And the one time I put, I said, "Yo, this is the most consistent barber I've ever worked with." That was like 2014 wow. or, or or 20 some something no. like that, right? And I and I have posts and I say, "Yo, this is the most consistent barber I ever worked next to." All right, we're back. All right, so go back to let's start talking about. Um, barbers that are trying, you know, like like uh, people that want to become barbers, people that are starting. What advice or what would you tell them? What would you give? What, what piece of advice would you give them? So bring it back like baking soda, right? This is the advice that I give them. I would say, never stop your dreams, but know your talent limits. Okay. Like here's here's the thing. Like some people are. You know, it, it's not a fault. It's people think it's like a fault or something to like know their talent limits, man. No, like, you know, if you if you do whatever you do, just try to be good at. It. If you know, if you're not good at, it, you should probably try to pick another avenue. That, you, you know, it's if good, that makes sense. It's good to try things. I get it. You know, there's a you new know, barber. You want to try different things, yeah. things like that. But if you've never done it before and you're not sure, make sure that that's, you know, the other person or people are aware that you've never done it before. You, you know, you know, and, and and you're not sure. Don't don't say that. Oh yeah, I got it. I'm gonna do it. And give the customer or give that person the impression that that, you know, it's gonna come out the exact same way they want it. My thing is this, man. The barber shit, man. This shit is a life commitment, bro. You're gonna be barber your whole life. I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that. You know that label, cause you know that's that's part of like my shit. Like, I want to be known as better than a barber. But forever, you're gonna be known as a barber. Yeah, I get it, it. Don't matter. Anything that you like uh, pursue after, like. They still want, they're like, oh, the ball, you know what I'm saying? But they, they, this this joint is just a trade, man. It's an artistic expression. Mm-hmm. I think if you ever seen any, any of our shit, bro, this shit is not just a job. It's, 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 it's artistic expression, bro. It's about creating, man. And like, for new barbers out there, man, like, it's not easy. Like, no. it, it doesn't come no. during overnight. Like, it no. takes time, no. takes patience. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, you know what it, it comes take, with a lot of things, man. No, like people, you know, you know, you know what it takes can't most? give up the desire to want to learn. And, and listen, that, amongst, and that takes amongst, me back. Uh, above all Word. the above <laughs> all those, the desire, bro. Word. You know, it, and that's another thing. Just because you got your license, or just because you're working in a barber shop, don't think you know it all. Shit. You know what I mean? There's always listen. new styles. There's always new. There's always something to learn. There's, you know what I'm trying to say? So Facts. even if you've been doing it 13 years, 15 years, 
five years, whatever the case is, you, you know, you're going to, there's always something to learn. You're going to learn more stuff. You know what I mean? There's something new, so something. There's always something that you can do to, to keep educating yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you ever meet a barber that says he knows it all, he don't know nothing. Look, my thing is, bro, the day you stop learning, you might as well hang that shit. The same thing where I say. Your with, career is the, over. The day you too good to sweep the hair that you cut, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hang that shit up. You ain't supposed to be involved no more. Yeah. You know? You're not about, like, you're, you're a performance artist, bro. The hair comes off your, sweep your shit, bro. It'll keep you humble. You know, and your customers feel that, wow. too. Customers know that, like, if this is something, you know, like, when they come and get a haircut, they know if you're doing a half-ass job. They feel that energy, you know what That's I mean? They know, I'm, oh, he's, he's just doing the motions just to get his job done, you know what I mean? Um, and, and the day that you... The day that you make it feel like it's just a job, or I gotta get this over with today, I don't really yeah, want to be stop, here. Stop, stop. All, all that rubs on your customer. It sucks. It does. Like I, I have been through that personally. I could, I could testify. Yeah. Like I have been through that, man. It's like, you know, it happens. There's days that there's days that you're like, oh man, I really, you know, I really don't want to be in the barber shop. Everybody today. can't perform a hundred percent every day, bro. It's unrealistic. It's facts. It's just, it, it, it's, people are people, man. Yeah. You know, it, you have to respect that, too. Plus, like I said, man, just because you want a haircut, bro, that don't mean your barber sitting around waiting on you on that call, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, just because you feel you want a cut, bro, it's like, you know. What else would you tell new barbers? New, oh, shit, I'm sorry. New barbers, uh... Just stay adamant about it, man. If you like, I said, bro. If you want to learn, if you want to get greater, I'm, I'm, I'm <clears throat> pardon me. I'm living proof that, like, you know, I was setting my ways, man. I started working here, bro. It was hard for me. You, you know why? It was. You know what the the most hardest was being around a whole bunch of other barbers. I was coming by myself, bro. I have anxiety to the like to the nth degree, bro. Yeah. Being around so many other people, good barbers, bro. That shit was, listen, it wasn't an easy, easy feat for me, man. No, but I did it, and you know what? I feel like I'm a better person because of it. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, it kept it more interesting, too, probably. It brought, you probably even got the love back for it, you know what I mean? Like, if you've been working by yourself. That's a fact. And you've been doing it for, well, let's say, a year by yourself, it ain't the same as, like if it's, as if you've been doing it six months with five other people, you know That's what I mean? That's a fact. It definitely does rekindle, like, your uh, enthusiasm for it to want to learn mm -hmm. and like i say it's it's not listen man you somebody could teach you anything if you don't want to learn you ain't gonna learn yeah i agree with that but another man, thing i would another thing i would suggest for new barbers is um establish and get an understanding right as to what it is that um the customer wants okay um sometimes i've had customers in my chair they say, look, I want a skin fade. And in reality, it's not really skin skin. You know, it's something else or, or you know, or, or like a shadow fade or something like that. Or, you know, you kind of have to figure out exactly what it is that your customer wants. Now with these phones, man, you can just look up pictures and show a picture and, and you know. But the main thing is to come to an understanding as to what they want and, um, and, then, and then start. Don't just assume, okay, he wants a skin fade, that the skin fade has got to be high. He may want it low. <coughs> Have an agreement with the... And, you know, come to an understanding as to what it is. Right, 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 right. <coughs> I had an experience like that where um, a guy wanted a haircut. I was a rookie, and um, he said, oh, I want a number two with uh, a, a, a light fade. Rook, that number, that number two bar. was different. His Student eyes. barber, rookie, started right in the middle. Yep. The guy, nah. <laughs> not to say, like, I'm against any race or anything, but he he was Mexican, so you already know he had, like, long hair. Mm. Imagine a two hey, on that type of hair. He was lighter than you. <laughs> Imagine a number two on that type of hair. Long. That's it. He's gone. He's gone. He said, you left me, Paul. <laughs> he got mad yelling out the... All across the barbershop, I'm like, oh. A lot God. of people's um, uh, idea of a blade number is different than the actuality of it. Yeah. 
Some when people don't know what the say, size it is. I want a tree for if they well look, okay, just you know, there's different blades, there's different lengths, man, like That's why I say pictures are the best, man. Go buy a picture, More. open up Google, open up Instagram, show him a picture of what you think he might want and let him, you know, dictate to you whether it is or mm -hmm. it isn't. Truth be told, another reason why I don't like cutting my, because I got to ask too many questions. How do you, <laughs> you know, how do you like your face? You like it low, medium, dark. Okay, do you like it high, medium, or, or low? Uh -huh. Do you like, want your shape up? You want your shape up sharper natural? No, I ain't never asked that shit. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys. Do but no, nah, it's the truth of the matter, man. It's like, it's like that. You know, there's numerous different, you know. A lot of details, you know? man. Yeah, man. Don't be afraid, bro. Listen, <coughs> just because you sit in a barber's chair and be like, I want a shing shing with a bang bang, it don't mean it's going to come out like that. And describe it. Yeah. Describe that shit. Definitely. You know? that's, that's, that's a big one. Like, I ain't going to uh. lie. Establishing what they want. Getting that understanding out of the way is probably one of the most important things. I That's think. a fact. They'll provide to you been getting a better haircut. Yep. Now, how would you tell new barbers to um, build clientele? What would you tell them? Build clientele? I would, I would say uh, social media. I didn't seen it. I could testify to it. I live. I. I. I, I almost say. I live. That would be social media is one. I would say word of mouth. Word of mouth has always been, always, always has been, and always will be probably your number one way to bring more customers into your chair um let your customers work for you what i mean by that is you know they got cousins they got friends that you don't know you subjection know. That's, yeah. a, that's, Let the them best, recommend that's the best that's uh, the uh, best um and, and the best um, statement i ever heard about that family friends people that you know you know let them work for you not even let your customers work for, let your work work for you <laughs> It's not about I'll let your customer let your work. Well, that's well, basically work. what I mean. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say yeah. I'm giving you a haircut. That's a fact. And I bless you when they come and they ask you where you that get your haircut goes, at. That listen, comes back to me. You know good, what I mean? Look, the best thing is good haircuts sell themselves. Word. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Word. Good haircuts sell themselves. But people it, go. <clears throat> people go and inquire and be inquisitive and, and People are proactively to... seeking to get with your shit if you put somebody you know there's a lot of clients that they don't like saying who's their barber i don't know why some people they, do because they, yeah. they want to they want you to be available to them no they, yeah they want to be like call you on a saturday at three o'clock and be like yo can i can quick get a haircut they, they want you to be available they gatekeeping it basically they, get, they gatekeeping yeah they don't it. want they don't want too many people to know about but, you know what i mean oh i got exclusive Bob. stop being a gatekeeping on, ass motherfucker, bro. Bro. Shit, bro that's exactly what it is for real though stop being like that bro <laughs> you ain't paying your barber for every haircut you turn <laughs> down bro we get money all yeah you know, yeah where you get, get your haircut at what the fuck like, like how does that that's awkward bro like when you're bo when you, 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 you your friend you, you, you know they ask you oh where'd you get your hair cut what do you say me no i'm just saying like when you don't want to tell <laughs> them to I tell, your I tell the truth so how is <laughs> it that they're not gonna be what, what, are, what are they gonna say when they're like oh who's your boy you gonna be like weird shit, bro. I'm, I'm trying to tell you everybody don't want everybody i can't tell you it's a secret yeah everybody don't want everybody as sharp as they are <laughs> Why? Everybody don't <laughs> want everybody as sharp as they are. It's a secret. That's a whole fact. Everybody does not want everybody as sharp as they are. Yeah, that's, that's fucked crazy up, though. All right, so social media, what, what, do you, what would you say? Social media? Suggestions, like old style, flyers. Uh -huh, you know, going out there talking to people. Talk to people, yeah. Promote yourself, like you always say. Another thing, consistency. I'd say be consistent. Um... If your hours are from 10 to 7, make sure you're available from 10 to 7. I mean, that's basically it, you know? You give a customer a good haircut the first time, make sure you give them that same exact service the second time. Or better. Or be, better. Like, be like a robot. <laughs> Don't matter what time, day, time, Terminator. <laughs> PCs up and put them down. What, what else, Baz? What else you think? What else? What do I think? Uh huh. I think be authentic, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't fake the funk, mm. bro. People, people recognize fake all the time, man. Be be yourself, bro. Yourself gonna get yourself gonna get gonna do you better than pretending to be something that you're not. Mm -hmm. there, not for nothing though. I saved it on here because I wanted to do something with it. But there was uh, one of those reels on Instagram, mm -hmm. 
and it was just basically someone talking, right? And he said, my biggest flex is that I don't have to lie or I don't have to. Um, my biggest flex is I am keep who I am. Funky. I keep it funky. I am who I am. I'm not trying to be like any, it, anyone bro. else. Right? That, listen. I thought that was pretty dope because, you know, it all goes back to, like, what he's talking about. You know what I mean? Don't I like the one that you sent me that it says, like, the people I have around me, like, love me how I how, how I am. That's like, a exactly. fact. Not for not anyone else, you know? Mm -hmm. like, That's a fact, bro. And it, it, nothing, nothing, como se dice? Nothing, nothing fake. fake. Exactly. Correct. Nothing fake that right. you're tr pretending to be. That's it, bro. Listen, man. Yeah. No, I agree with that 100%. People that love you, they're going to love you for who you are, man. Be If you could be anything, bro, be a be authentic. Yeah. Be an island of authenticity <laughs> in a sea of mediocrity. Original. You know, like, yeah. all, like, all, no, truth be told. like even truth with all this, though, this, is what, this is what we truth were talking told, about bro. last time. Um, I was saying we go off this shit. <laughs> bro, I used to, I, I used to hate all that video. I hated being on I camera. I still say it to this day, like. I just had to overcome all that stuff. Man, so don't think that one day to another it was like, it oh, snap, even, he loves being on camera. It you know don't even I mean? feel like no, no camera or nothing. We sitting here <laughs> busting it up, bro. Like, we'd be busting it up on Friday, bro. That's the whole thing. It's, it's like a new thing. It's a new experience. It's, Yo, that's the whole you know, thing. Authenticity yeah, exactly. sells itself, bro. Exactly. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if there's one thing that you are plausible to do is being <laughs> yourself bro right. truth be told the easiest thing to be is yourself all right you're, you're for real mm -hmm. if you don't like it move keep it moving yeah. uh, look, if it, uh, i'm not looking for friends <laughs> <laughs> <It was. laughs> now let me ask you a question do you feel that as a barber you gotta be you have to wear different suits what of I mean course, by that is of course, absolutely. for clients, you have to be yes. a chameleon. You have to be, you know what I say? I say in, in intellectual property, you have to be multifaceted, multifaceted, mm -hmm. okay. which means that you could cut and relate to someone and keep them in a, that's a different atmosphere from someone else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you have to be multi multifaceted like a golf ball. There's multi-fat, you know, someone comes in and you have to be relatable or, you know. Understandable. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't mean by like, oh, uh, I don't mean like if a doctor sits in your chair, you got to change the way you speak. No. Uh, what I mean is, is, is kind of, you're going to have certain people, you're going to have some people sometimes that want to talk about life situations. So you got to be that person to listen. You're going to have some people that are going to want advice from you. So you got to be that person to give advice. You're going to have some people that are going to look up to you. So you got to be that person to set an example. So all these things is what I mean by by being a barber and, and by, by showing different faces. I don't mean that not be yourself. You have a cop in your chair. You got to change the way you act. No. What I mean is, is you have I to be able to. You got a cop in your chair. You can change the way you act. You know? So what I mean is, is, is you have up. to kind of. You got to be able to, to, to be that. Wear those different suits. You got to be able to do that. You know? And, and I think that's. No, I, that's probably one of the most yeah. stressful and hardest parts of the day. It man. is. It definitely because at the is. end of the it day, is. you're like, you, you're like, wow. It I is. came into contact it today is. with over 100 people. And sometimes people go so deep telling you things that you probably forget, like, where you're at. Well, see, I, doesn't listen, that happen to I, you guys? I, I, I tell like, you you're I cutting you. and you're doing everything, but, like, you're <laughs> thinking about what they're telling you, and it's like, so. No, see, I tell more people than they should hear. <laughs> <laughs> I tell, or rather, I tell people more than they should hear. I'm mean, I'm like, yeah, guess what? What happened? Da, da, da. I don't know what to do. How you want your hair cut? That's where you're here in the barbershop. True story. <laughs> no. Truth be told. Truth yeah, be told. That's a fact. Truth that's be told. But no, listen, uh, it's, a therape it's therapeutic for me, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, same thing. That's as a good is, way to call it. As, as it is for them, they come to the barbershop, they're like, shit, bro, I got this shit going on. Down. Pardon me. They go, I got this shit going on. And then when you hit them with, like, shit. Well, I got this shit going on. They were like, damn. My shit ain't right. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Like, they were never like, mind, bro. I'm damn. Hope you make it through that, bro. Like, yeah. boing, boing. Bring it up. I talk. What are some benefits 
benefits of, of being a barber. Benefits of being a barber, you get to work your own thing. <laughs> you get to make your own hours, you cut who you want to cut. Mm-hmm. Um, cash on demand. <coughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> Meet a lot of good people, man. People that, you know, this is what I, this is what I would like to say, bro. Cutting hair is not just about a monetary factor, bro. It's about there's people that like some sometimes favors are more valuable than uh, currency. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You 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 get what I'm saying? Like yeah. Me you meet a lot of good people, bro. I'm a good dude. But I know a lot of people that's like, yo, yeah, da 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 da. Like, kind of, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know how, I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know how better to describe. But sometimes, man, it's not just about cutting hair. You meet people that. Mm-hmm. You're you know, valuable to. The best thing that you could ever have is someone owing you a favor. <laughs> right or wrong? In a way, sometimes. I yeah. know, always. Also, sometimes when people owe you a favor, they disappear. Yeah. That's cool. 80 percent of the no, times. I, I, I can't I can't talk on that. No, no. Like in general in the world, I mean, but yeah. you yeah, cho- but you choose who who cry what who crowd you're gonna have, you, you know. know? It's, it's good, man. Listen, when I was in screen okay. To give to give an example. <clears throat> Bunch of my people like that I used to cut, right? They own bars, they own restaurants in Scran. Like, Business owners. Yeah, but they, they, I've, you know, I've cut their hair forever. It's, it's more than. So, it's, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's about a, 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 a relationship. It's, yes. It's, it's about going yeah. somewhere and say, okay, I know such Bro, and such. Right. Boom, oh, dope, whatever. But it's right. not about favors. Favors. No, are no, no. I ain't talking it's about more, favors. I'm yeah, talking I get about it. mutual respect. Yeah, yeah, mutual. yeah. You know, like. It's not just a barber client type like of thing. You're more, likely, like, you're more likely to go to that bar and be like, you no, know, they'll recognize even, you and they'll kind of give you a little bit of a different treatment yeah, than as if you didn't people, know nobody. Bro, like I, and yeah. I've been able to, I guess, acclimate that throughout mm-hmm. the years, you know, being a solid dude, though. Mm-hmm. I don't be, you know, be a good dude. You know, and then that's, that goes like back we, to the other thing. You don't you don't really know who, who I mean. All no, right, I do. All right, let me, let me rephrase no, that. I it's do. not that I you don't know who. You're going to have all different types of people. You're going to have lawyers. You're going to have cops. You're going to have drug dealers. You're going to have Everybody. business owners all sitting in your chair, right? And you may have a business owner that says, man, I'm looking for a mechanic. That's an opportunity, bro. Right? And you may have it's another an customer that's a mechanic. Bro. You know? So you it's have ne- to understand. It's like, networking as well. Right. It's, that's an opportunity, man. And let's, talk about, let's talk about something that's happening to the, in the shop or... This shop, any shop at all, What's happening? right? That that you know kind of stands out in your mind. What's that? Something that's happened to you. Something that's happened. Oh, you some, know, just in, oh, just just in uh, general. I thought you said something. Okay, Up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Not here, like right here, but in general. in general. Um, no, you know what, this, bro? That's why I love about this spot, man. It's pretty much drama free. Like that. That's what I enjoy. That's what I enjoy the most about this place, man. Because the reason I've been to a numerous amount of shops in my life is because it's it, it's not so much me dealing with people. Uh-huh. It's more so people dealing with me. Okay. Because I, I, I'm the... I'm, no, I get it. I'm the same way. Like Wherever I go, I take me with me. You know? Like, yeah. It is what it is. You you are yourself. Man. I am. It, it was what you were talking about. Listen, I can't help it. I can't help it. I am what I am. It is what it is. It's gonna be what it's gonna what, be. What about you, Chris? Um, you know, it's a lot of different things that like barbers and like barbershops they have, but you know, it's like Spaz says, you just gotta get comfortable and find somewhere that you feel love some yeah. people that really rock with you mm-hmm. not say that and that you feel comfortable you. with them too because it's not just about like them feeling comfortable mm-hmm. with yeah because like, here's the thing bro if if you're a barber bro you spend the majority of your life at a shop bro yeah not with your si- significant other bro you're experiencing life you're venting about life you're 
commenting about like, your own life, everybody's life, man. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're a barber, man, you're here for a lot of hours, man. You hear more than you're at home, bro. You know, and that, that, that's 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 with everything in general. You're right. It's a camaraderie. You know, so check it out. Let, let's say you're in the barber shop, ten hours, twelve hours, right? Right. You're busy, long day. So you're here, twelve hours, and let's say if you consider it a job, this is what you know, a job. You don't. It's this is not my passion. I'm not this and that. This is I just do this to make some money. <laughs> so you're basically working your butt off for twelve hours just to live three or four afterwards so how does that how does that pan out you know you're spending more time at work than you're actually living because all you're doing is you're living to work you're not you know working to live you, you get what i'm trying to say yeah i would mm -hmm. love to ask you that question i love yeah, what i, I do mean, so it doesn't seem that way to me i like coming here um i like being with everybody i like my yeah. customers and i love it you know if it was a job where i have to punch a clock every day and i hated that bro you, you, you like that would be miserable bro it is <laughs> it is <laughs> like some that's miserable <laughs> you know and I, i've been through but it, it makes it easier when there's a bunch of people around you that like bye -bye. yeah but i mean it, it, it's bro, much it, easier when you like you like being here you know when okay. you don't like being here and it's a job let's say you live in a warehouse or you're you know shoveling or digging holes right that shit's fucking miserable, dude. Talk to me in 10 years. Tell me how you feel. Oh, in 10 years? Probably in 10 years, I won't be cutting no more. Are you a uh, day? That's the right, right answer. You know, like, I'm going to be living life. Like, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. So that it gets to a point right where thing, it's right. like, now I can sit back no. and, and. No, and it's about you work. did the right thing to to ensure your future. Some people, is, some people, this is, <coughs> this is the gig, bro. Yeah. Word. You know, think about that too, guys. Barbers, a lot of barbers don't really think about that, man. About you, how long you wanna keep cutting hair? I have no choice. What do you mean you have no choice? I have no choice. I mean, you're still Let young. Let me hold ten thousand, dude. <laughs> 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 I'll show you how to turn ten thousand into fifty dollars. No. <laughs> what about you, Chris? <laughs> I don't know yeah, how long, y man. Y'all got, got kids and shit, bro. I'm, I'm a. I'm a I'm a unicorn. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep cutting hair, but I don't I don't have a job. You I don't, do I don't, you ain't I don't call this no a job, but you know, I yeah. I wanna have like probably businesses, you know. I wanna have five stacks of fifties this high, but No, I mean like what I, I, what I have plans what? like for the future, like maybe some real estate, maybe some business. You, you never know. You got a whole bunch of kids too. You just had one same thing with this <laughs> He got more kids than this. my kids are all old though, man. Not old, but they're I, uh, older. They're grown. Like, yeah. My youngest is know. like fourteen years old, so I'm almost done raising kids, bro. Yep. Done? Yep. I yeah, just I started, gonna, so. You just started. So. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Now it's great, man. It's great no, it to is. it's great to be a father. I know it is. It's scary me. though. Yeah, yeah. of course it's scary. It's scary yeah. as shit. That's why yeah, I, don't I ain't gonna lie that far. I is. know it's scary as shit, bro. I gotta that's, get that's mentally fright. ready. I gotta talk with Jose hey, more, but that's right. Gotta get bro. mentally that, ready that, for that, this that. generation coming up. No, it's not even about that, man. It's that something that. Is living and growing depends on you for anything, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. scary to me, man. True. That's why I don't have no kids. Because I'm still so trying to raise myself. You know, and you got a good head on your shoulders, man, because I ain't going to lie, dude. When I was young and I had kids young, I didn't know shit. I didn't know a motherfucking thing. Oh, I think you give me too much credit. <laughs> no, for real, because I was young and I was just working. I had... Bro, I'm going to put it like this. There was a point where it was seven of us living in a room. Not an apartment, not a studio. Nigga, a room with a shared so bathroom. Warm. All right? Sleeping on bunk beds, cribs, you know? And and I've been through I've been through a whole lot, man. My kids have seen all that, too. And, and Trying to get through way, it. I'm glad that they've seen that, man, because now they see where we are where we at and they can get through it and then it makes them stronger in the future you feel they me? they learn from that too right yeah. so did i i came up from a broken family yeah my father raised me alone single father since the time i was 10 my father I'm saying, like my father had to take my mother to court for child support no and i told myself i said i'll never subject 
no no matter how much you know sometimes people be having kids just to say oh i'm i got kids right that's not me bro i can never put some because i'm not right i i wasn't right because of my parents i would i'm breaking generational curses by not having kids be and don't be ashamed of that mm -hmm. truth be told if you come from a family of generational bullshit it's not it's it's not a shame to cut that shit out bro because you know you know i learned stuff trial and error mess something up <laughs> ultimately everything was my fault in the end um, of course it is you know i could have always done something to prevent something different but i mean i've had been through everything i've had and that guilt going to stay with you the rest of your life. You know nah, and things happen for a reason. You know that, right? like, yeah. Nah, bro, listen. Yeah. Things that, uh, I mean, but your free will has an effect on them things happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, of course. Yeah. There were certain things that I could have done different, whatever, you know. And, and to my kids that watch this, this video, you know, I apologize for everything I put y'all through. But no, I'm not saying about that. I, um, you know, I'm, sure I'm glad you... that they seen it, all that, too, because now they know that the struggle. that's not the end of the world. Certain that's bad it. things happen. And, and, and you made it, bro. You know. That's I, what I'm saying. Well, you know, everything is, is better now, you know. But they they saw everything, you know. So When they are a little bit older, they're probably are not. Thank you. They'll for appreciate that. it. They'll, they'll. I can tell you know why. I, maybe not thank me, yeah. but they'll they'll they they'll will, know what to do. They will thank you. They'll know it's not the end of the world. They will. You got people. You got people out there that I got raised on my own, bro, in this country. Yeah, that's that's tough. And everything I've been through, that you're saying, I apologize. They're well, gonna talk thank about you that shit then, bro. for everything that talk about that, that they went through with. You don't talk and about the things you have done for them, because yeah. not not everybody has parents, has, has parents, parents there to go through them, or yeah, parents no, right. at all, or parents I didn't. at all. You see what I'm saying? Or parents at all? You no. get me? So. Right. I agree, bro. I was like, all right, back to something else. <laughs> Truth, be to back. Back <laughs> Truth, to be Truth, Truth be told. Truth be told. They yeah, never, um, listen, truth be told, they never really tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. So, yo, we're going to wrap it up for today. Y'all be safe. Thanks for coming out. Like, watching. comment, subscribe, share. Y'all be Smash safe. Smash that like. Smash that subscribe. Share that shit with your homies. Y'all bozos <laughs> anyway. CT the bar. Add CT the barber. Add NYO barbershop. Add NYO Hold barber. Up. Hey, shopping back, Slayer. Talk we about out. It. Don't talk about me. <laughs> Let's wrap it up, please.